All of a sudden, MCP servers are everywhere. What started as an open standard developed by Anthropic is now top of mind for almost everyone working on AI. If you watched this year's Build conference, support for MCP was mentioned in Azure AI Foundry, M365 Copilot, and tools like Copilot Studio. But not only with Microsoft, also with SAP, MCP is top of mind. SAP announced support during Sapphire, and more and more SAP-related MCP servers are popping up by the community, by individual developers, even by big partners. So I thought, how can we, in the SAP and Microsoft ecosystem, leverage that? At first, I did some wipe coding and created an MCP server using GitHub Copilot, and it worked amazingly well. But it was just a prototype. How would I make it accessible from the internet? What about authentication? How to make it enterprise ready? Here comes Azure API management. The team announced MCP support at Build as well, and it truly is amazing. So let's take a look. Okay, so basically what we are going to do is we'll follow the um, learn Microsoft documentation for expose REST API in API management as an MCP server. Uh, for this, what we'll use as an API is the very famous GW Sample Basic service. Um, this is everywhere available. You can easily sign up um, and, and use it, um, and, and you're good to go. I've also already set up my Azure API management. Here, just be sure that in the pricing tier, make sure that you're using a basic standard or premium tier, don't use the developer, and also make sure that you don't use V2. V2 is currently, at least at the moment um, of this uh, recording, um, not supported. So just um, select the basic one. Another thing that is important here under services and uh, service updates and in preview, make sure that you have the AI gateway early selected. Um, so you can easily switch the update groups um, it's just, it takes a few hours, so, so be patient if you if you change this. This was one of the issues that I had initially, that I had selected this one, but it took some time to take into place. So just make sure that you have the AI gateway early um, um, selected. With this, we are almost good to go. So we, we can create now our API. I would typically now just select the OData, um, um, uh, yeah, create from, from OData services. However, as you might have seen here, it is REST API. And, and yes, REST also means OData, but in this specific case, it really has to be an, an API following the open API specification, which means I somehow need to convert my OData service into an open API specification. Luckily, this is easily um, done. So I'm, I'm just taking the, the, the metadata information. I'm just calling the, the dollar metadata information. Then I use the OData transformer. So I just um, paste basically here this um, dollar metadata information um, from my, uh, yeah, from, from this um, GW uh, sample service. And now I just say convert to an open API specification. This is the open API specification. I can just download it and I'm good to go. So I've already prepared this. So I'll just select here the file. This is the um, specification. Now, um, this is the GW um, sample service. And what I'll do is now I'll just change some of the settings. Let me quickly do this. I will call this here um, Open API GW sample. And uh, we will also in a GW um, sample basic setting. So with this, let me just create um, this. API. And here we go. So now we have the API um, specific, um, specified. So if I go here to settings, I can see, well, almost everything correct. In my specific case, I need to um, change here the web service URL, um, which basically again points to yeah the, the, the URL of the GW basic sample service. Everything else can stay the same. Well, I will disable the subscription key required, um, which makes it a little easier, basically. So I'll just click on save. And now we're actually we're good to go. We, we could test the service now. But actually, what I want to do is I want to leverage some of the functionalities of API management and make sure that the authentication is handled. Because obviously, if I would open up this service now, you would need to authenticate. 
So what I'll do is I'll just go here to the policy of um, this, um, this, this API. And what I'll do is I will, in this case, hard code, do a basic authentication. I'll hard code the username and password. So what, what I've done already beforehand, I am created a named value um, here with my password, with my um, username. And um, that's what I'm um, accessing here. So um, uh, I'm, I'm just setting a header variable with basic username and password. I click on save. And now we're good to test the service. So, so let me just go down here. Let's just do this here. Um, get um, entities for business partner sets. Let's maybe just take the top five. I click on send. And we get here the top five business partners from the SAP system. So perfect. Now we have our API or our OData service exposed via Azure API management. And obviously I could do now all the, the magic things here with the policy. I could implement a single sign on using Entra ID, or I could have some quota limits or, or rate limits in here. So, so all of this is very easily possible via um, the, the, the policy. But now the very cool thing is that here I have the possibilities to create an MCP server directly from one of these APIs. So what I'll just do is I'll select and um, create. I can see here now our open API gateway sample basic. I will now be able to select what are the functionalities that I um, can use here. So potentially I could, for example, um, yeah, make sure that the MCP server exposes business partners, products, um, that they're also create scenarios in here. I'll skip this for now. The, the cool thing, for example, with the create scenario, where especially in SAP, you, you need to handle CSRF tokens. That's something that I could all handle within the policy of API management. So with since I am using API Azure API management to create this MCP server, a lot of these enterprise ready qualities are already included. So with this, I actually have now my MCP um, uh, server um, URL. And with this, I can easily test it. One nice way to test this integration is actually using the MCP server inspector. So if I go here to the inspector tool, then um, there's, uh, it, it's very easy to get started. So I'll just use this command here, here, shell, let's start here this um, MCP inspector. So it's running, let's open it up. And now I can just take the URL here of my MCP server. I put it in here. And if I click on connect, then the connection is there. I can take a look at what are actually the tools, the, the features of this MCP server. I can see here there's an get entity business set. That's exactly what we obviously had um, defined before. And now I can browse, I can take a closer look. I can see here uh, the, the, the different functionalities and I can easily um, yeah, use this as a, as a first simple test. So, but now let's do the next step. Let's integrate our MCP server in, um, in, a, in a client, basically. And I want to get started by doing this in Visual Studio Code. In, in the next episode, we'll do this from Copilot Studio. But for now, let's just use Visual Studio Code. We're still in this development environment where in Visual Studio Code, there is now um, the possibility to enable an MCP support. Um, so I'll do this and then I can actually add my MCP server. So I'll go in here, I click on um, MCP add server. Um, we want to do this uh, via HTTP. So I again, just paste the URL to my um, MCP server exposed via Azure API management. Um, we'll give it a name. Okay, I'll just leave the default name here. And with this, I have my MCP server um, up and running and configured. And now the really cool thing is I can open up here GitHub Copilot. I can switch to agent mode. So in case I'm not yet here in agent mode, I can select the tools um, that should be available. So if I scroll down here, you can see here that my MCP server with these two tools that we also saw previously in the inspector 
can be seen here. So there's the get entities from business partner, get product set. And now I can just ask, um, show me business partners from SAP. Now Copilot has access to the MCP server. So you can see it, it's using here the, the configuration that I have configured here. It sees that um, this is the get entity set for business partner set. So from this configuration that I have, I, I need to continue. So I, I approve basically this request. And now, uh, okay, uh, now it didn't get, uh, let, let me see if I can try it again. Um, it was saying something about the city. Okay, let's let's continue. Here are the, and now it works. Okay, here are now the first 10 business partners from SAP. So the MCP server integrated in GitHub Copilot was now able to interact with my SAP system using this MC, MCP server. And again, this was just the developer view. This was how to use MCP with Azure API management in the context of GitHub Copilot. But in the next video, we'll take a closer look at how to integrate this MCP server also in GitHub Copilot.